What's up? It's your boy Check Running Blue, aka BMF Blue Da Vinci, checking in right here. And guess what? Right now you tuned in. Hip Hop Wired. Don't leave. Yeah, I, mean, I, I titled um, this project Angels and Demons for a couple reasons. When I came home, I dropped a tape. I did. Um, and it was the Da Vinci Code. It was my first, it was my, I recorded it in my basement in Atlanta. It was my first, you know, um, it was my first collection from being home from prison. So I was still like all over the place, trying to get adjusted, trying to figure out what's going on. And, then, and this right here was the sequel to that. I entitled it Angels and Demons. Not only because that was part two to the Da Vinci Code, but that was that was really where I was at. I was fighting them. You know what I'm saying? Like I got kids, I got family, I got these niggas in the streets, I got you know what I'm saying? I got boom, you know what I'm saying? So like I got my angel and I got my demon and it's like I gotta make these decisions all the time. Like I'm gonna come out the house today, but do I come out the house with a pistol? I'm a felon. And even in the music, and I tell people when I do the interviews like that. For me, the angelic side is me being cool, like messing with the chicks, the just the stand down, laid back blue. You know, the demon side is the is the still having a mind frame to talk about drugs and talk about, you know, things that, that are not good things. You know what I'm saying? And and just trying to find a balance between it all, you know. So I think we're coming back home from prison and, and, and having this grown up outlook on life, you know, in general, it makes it cool, you know what I'm saying, for me to just go ahead and try to can that stigma. You know what I'm saying, we did what we did, yes. I'm not denouncing that. Yeah, we did that, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you go to prison, they put us in prison, bro. And, and for real, when, when, when people go to prison, it's like being at home and getting put on punishment. Your mom's put you on punishment, it's not for you because she feel like you're gonna continue with that same behavior. You get put on punishment because it, it we're trying to change your behavior. You get a whooping because we're trying to change your behavior. So it's rehabilitation. So that's where I am. I'm trying to I'm trying to bridge this gap right now between BMF, shoot, kill, sell drugs, ah, to like niggas a grown man, nigga make nice music, niggas a family man, people love him, niggas is rapping saying they trying to be him. He must be the nigga. You know, I, I was living in Brownsville in the Cephalo Projects in 97. You know what I'm saying? So I've been out here trooping. I was like 16 years old or something. But I've been out here trooping for a long time. And back then it was like a groundwork type deal. But that's when you would have a street team and you'd have the CDs and the t-shirts and the stickers and posters and tapes. And you just out there hand in hand with your street team. You going to How Can I Be Down and Jack the Rapper and all these different kind of conventions where everybody comes. You know, you still have have conventions and stuff, but back then it was like a footwork type thing. So I go I go to prison. I come home and I see that we're, we're at a visual point in hip hop right now. Like everybody wants to see. Like I don't get up in the morning and go find the hottest record that I can hear. I get up and go to World Star or something and find what I could see. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a real visual person. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like at this point in time, the internet and being visual is what's selling these people. Your boy Blue Da Vinci checking in. If you want to see more good meat like this right here, you're going to have to go to youtube.com backslash hip hop wire.